Hello witches, wizards and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters, welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is a YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes every time we find an item, food and drink inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we served up a tombstone cake for Nearly Headless Nick's death day party, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if you're new to the kitchen and you want to see more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell, then you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, I need a little bit more cake, so let's see what's next. Although we're not at the Halloween feast, there's still plenty more food to come at the death day party. So let's head back into chapter eight to find out what's next. So our last sentence has finished, but we've still got more to come in the next sentence. Harry watched amazed as a portly ghost approached the table, crouched low and walked through it. His mouth held wide so that it passed through one of the stinking salmon. Things are about to get fishy again. If you'd like to recreate this rotten salmon cake, then all of the ingredients, measurements and the method are up on my website, bradleybakes.co.uk. The link is down below in the description. So today we are making rotten salmon and while I could have just cooked some salmon and left it out too long, that would have been a waste of food. So instead, we're going to do something a little bit more magical with cake, creating a novelty cake that looks like a salmon that's been left out a little too long and may have been eaten by some of the pests at Hogwarts. It's gonna be a really, really fun twist on a cake and it's a great way to use some of the leftover cake crumbs that we made during the tombstone cake recipe. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll leave a link down below for you to check it out. First things first, we need to make the cake batter. So this is what you need to do. To make your simple cake batter, you want to begin by creaming together your butter and sugar until light and fluffy. In a jug, crack your eggs and then give them a quick whisk before pouring them into your butter and sugar a bit at a time. If the mixture begins to curdle, add in some flour and then keep on mixing until all your eggs are incorporated. At this point, you can add in the rest of your flour along with your vanilla and mixed spice and then mix this through until it's well combined. Now I want to give my salmon a realistic pinky orange kind of pastel colour, so I'm going to use a mix of pink and yellow food colouring to get my desired colour. Then all that's left to do is prepare your cake tin. So I've greased and lined the bottom, poured my cake mix in and then leveled it off with a spatula before baking in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit for about 25 to 30 minutes. You'll know it's cooked once a skewer comes out clean. So that is our sponge cake all baked and cooling down so we can move on to assembling our salmon. This is going to be made up of the salmon head and the salmon tail using this sponge and then in between I want to make a skeleton to make it look like the salmon has been sat there rotting for quite some time and for that we're going to use the leftover cake crumbs from Nearly Headless Nick's tombstone cake. If you missed that episode check out the link down below in the description to catch up. So we're going to mix that with buttercream icing which is going to help us get a sort of cake pop mixture to mould out our skeleton and then we'll ice over the top. First thing we do need to make our buttercream icing though so this is what you need to do next. To create your easy buttercream icing you want to add your butter into your bowl and whisk it until it's light and fluffy. Gradually add in your icing sugar a bit at a time and then keep on whisking until all your icing sugar is incorporated. We can then flavour it with some vanilla and then add in some milk to get a smoother texture. Next, I'm going to take out a few tablespoons and add them into our cake crumbs, mixing it through until it's well combined. You want a consistency that is a firm ball, but still soft enough for you to be able to mould it into shapes. We're going to use the rest of the buttercream icing to sandwich our cakes. You want about two thirds of the sponge, which is going to be the salmon head, and then the remaining third is going to be the tail. Use a stencil to carve out your shapes and then slice these in half. I've placed an even amount of buttercream on top of one layer and then sandwiched the other piece of cake over the top. You can then use your serrated knife to create some 3D textures. Once you're happy with the contouring, you can take the remaining buttercream and crumb coat the outside of both pieces. You can then pop these into the fridge to firm up for an hour. While the main pieces of cake are cooling, I'm going to mould out our skeleton, doing this on the board that I'm going to serve the cake on. Start off by moulding your cake crumbs into a sausage for the spine and then take some more cake crumbs to mould the smaller bones coming out of both sides. Work your way all along to use the rest of your cake crumbs and the bones should get smaller the closer you get to the tail. 
To hold this all into place, I'm gonna coat it with some white chocolate. So I've melted it down in a bowl over simmering water and then used my spatula to evenly coat all of the cake. All that's left to do is pop that into the fridge too for about 15 minutes until the chocolate sets. So our cakes are all set, so now we're gonna move on to the final steps of decoration to bring this salmon to life. So for this, I'm gonna use fondant. I'm actually gonna reuse some of that fondant from Lady Headless Nick's cake because there's no waste in the wizarding world. And I'm gonna mix that with some white fondant as well so we can get the different silvery tones of our salmon. Once we're happy with that, I'm then gonna finish it off with some black food coloring gel and some glitter because everybody loves glitter and then our salmon cake will be complete. These are your final steps. We're going to start off with the skeleton. So first you want to remove any excess chocolate from around the cake. Then roll out your white fondant to about half a centimetre thick and then layer that over your bones. Use some fondant tools to cut and smooth it into place. You can then pop this to one side while you move on to the head and tail of your fish. Our tail is going to be the darkest part, so I'm keeping the grey fondant just as it is, rolling that out to half a centimetre thick and then covering the whole thing. I'm then going to take some fondant tools and mark some grooves all along the tail. Before we cover our fish head, I'm going to cut a little incision to make a mouth and then clean out the insides. I then made my base colour from the head by mixing some grey with some white fondant, rolled this out to half a centimetre thick and then placed it over the top. Use your fondant tools to work this into the groove of the mouth all around the outside, smoothing it down and trimming off any excess. Then I'm going to create different shades of the grey and cut out some small circles which are going to be our scales. The easiest way I found to do this was to take your cutter and cut out your circles first and then you want to take a smaller circle cutter and then use that to take off the end of each one. Layer your scales on going from the lightest at the bottom to the darkest at the top. For the finishing touches to the skeleton, I've taken some cocoa powder and worked this over the top and into the grooves to give it a more 3D effect. I then mixed some black food colouring gel with some mixing alcohol and used this to dot over the head and tail of the salmon. Of course our fish needs an eye, so I've used a candy eye, but if you can't find any of these then you can make your own from some fondant. All that's left to do is give this a quick spray of glitter, just so our little fish is shimmering, and then I'm going to place those at the front and back of the skeleton. And with that, our rotten salmon cake is complete. It might look like it's gone off, but trust me, it will taste just fine. So there you have it. So far this season we've made fish cakes and now we've made cake that looks like fish. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of this rotten salmon cake recipe and if you're looking forward to giving it a go. If you're new to the kitchen and you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell then you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I'm off to see what the catch of the day is all about and I'll see you next week. It doesn't smell too bad but just in case. Not rotten at all.